Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I think it is high time that we dive headfirst into the latest included demo song project from recording artist Ellie Dixon, and that song is called Swing. Now, if you're not familiar, Logic Pro, the recording application from Apple, occasionally has updates. Even more occasional with those updates is that we get these demo song projects from professional recording artists that include all the tracks, all the plugin processing, the everything is there for you to enjoy and poke around at and have fun with and learn from. And we've had demo song projects from artists as varied as The Killers to Lil Nas X, back to Billie Eilish, and the latest one is from creative phenom Ellie Dixon. And if you're not familiar with Ellie Dixon, you and I can hang out because I'm embarrassed to say I had no idea who Ellie was until this project popped up with Logic Pro for Mac 11 and Logic Pro for iPad 2. But since I checked out the project, the song is Bananas, and I had to learn more about her. I had to check out more of her music, and it's awesome. She is a recording artist is best known for her covers and for using unusual household items for making music like toothbrushes, watermelons. I mean, just go look for her on YouTube. It's awesome. And I just want to dive in and examine what I took away from this project. There's always something to learn. There's always more to glean. And I think there's a lot of inspiration hidden in this demo project. Lastly, before we dig in to the artist herself, Ellie, if you happen to watch this video ever, hey, number one, this song's awesome. Number two, if you ever feel like being on the channel, geeking out about how you create and use Logic Pro, That would be awesome. All right, let's dig into it. First, I want to take a moment to examine the arrangement of the song swing here in the Logic Pro demo project. I won't play the song from beginning to end, but I do want to play for you about the first 40 seconds of the song, and then we'll poke at some of the other sections. I'm going to pop open the global tracks, and I'm going to set the global tracks to a single global track here, and I'm going to set it to marker. So even if the global tracks are closed, we can see each of the different song sections. And I'm also going to go to view, and enable the secondary ruler option so we can see the time across the song. And if I quickly go to the end of the song, you can see that swing is roughly about two minutes, 50 seconds, just under three minutes. All right, so let's go to the first couple sections here. And I'm going to hit play, and we're going to listen from the intro through the chorus. Here we go. Barely started my day, didn't even step up to the plate And you're already playing mind games I might, I might, I might run downstairs Middle of the night, thought I left the oven on Cause you're such a gaslight Always looking down cause you think you're a winner You're so full of it, how'd you even eat your dinner? Uh, uh. Batter up! Swing, swing, if you're gonna play these games, I'll join in You throw a lot of curveballs, yeah, but I'm hidden See, I'm worth a lot, lot more than you're giving me Batter up! Swing, swing, if you're gonna play these games, I'll join in You throw a lot of curveballs All right. What I love about music these days is I feel like a lot of convention, a lot of expectation around what qualifies as a rock song, a pop song, a hip hop song is largely gone out the window. It doesn't matter if you use a drum machine or a real live drum kit or samples of a drum kit. It doesn't matter if you have distorted guitars and it's a pop song. It doesn't matter if you have birds chirping in the background. It's all music. It all qualifies as an opportunity to enhance the creativity of a song. Now, what's probably not unique anymore, but I still marvel at, is that the intro of this song is four seconds. Four seconds, and we're already into the first verse. Then we're into the verse, which goes right into the pre-chorus after four bars. And by bar 11, Ellie's already hitting the chorus. We're 20 seconds into the song. This is definitely an expectation and a vibe for modern music where it's like, we want to get to the chorus as soon as possible. But I feel like Ellie gets to the chorus in 20 seconds and it doesn't feel like things have been rushed along. And then it breaks back down for the second verse. But continuing on, there's always a little bit of a change, yet there's a lot of consistency behind the song and the arrangement. So things break back down to something that we expect from the verse because it's already been set up in the first verse. But things kind of pick back up again. If we take a listen real quick. This takes money ball, yeah, you're not such a big fish. I can't stand this fake face scam, so I hit it right back at you with the grand slam. You met your town for call out the foul ball. I'm in the penthouse, you're on the ground floor, like oh middle of the night, thought I left the oven on cause you're such a get Then the kick comes in in the pre-chorus, and then we get to the chorus. Swing swing, if you're gonna play these games, I'll join in. You throw a lot of curve balls, yeah, but I'm hitting the sea. I'm with a lot, lot more than you give in. And 
there's just this ebb and flow throughout the song. The bridge breaks down, then it builds back up. And this is all accomplished in under three minutes. I think it's an incredible feat of efficiency and effectiveness to be able to build up and break down emotions across a song in a very brief amount of time. I also think there's some pretty cool wordplay in the pre-choruses, such as thought I left the oven on because you're such a gaslight. You're so full of it. How do you even eat your dinner? I mean, that's pretty cool. Those word associations that completely turn on its head what you expect is going to be said. And we take a quick listen once more. Something I've always loved from the records that I grew up on was candid moments, stuff that isn't necessarily considered musical that makes its way into the recording. And usually it was kind of banter or candid moments in the studio that happened to be recorded. And it's like, hey, we should put this in the intro or in the middle of a song. And the inclusion of Foley effects and sound effects in musical arrangements is something I love. I dig on that because I think it shows that anything can be musical. It doesn't have to be just a guitar, just a drum kit, just a sample. It could be anything out in the world. If you take a listen to just these three tracks, we have just bird sounds. And it's pretty cool. Then toss into it these baseball crowd sounds. If we take a listen again. I mean, how unexpected in the middle of a song. And yet it tickles your ear. It kind of gets your attention. If we listen to the second verse here. I mean, there you go. A baseball being hit by a bat, crowd sounds, bird sounds can all be relevant in a musical context. All right, so I've geeked out a little bit on the arrangement, the wordplay, the sound effects. Let's dig into some of the processing choices here. And I want to start at the top with the lead vocals. Take a listen. Barely started my day. You didn't even step up to the plate. And you're already playing mind games. I might, I might, I might run downstairs. Middle of the night. Right? So it sounds pretty good. It sounds quite good. We have some plug-in processing in the form of channel EQ, the compressor, console EQ, de-esser, multi-presser, compressor. So we have one, two, three, four dynamic processors working on this vocal, plus two EQs, and we have delay designer providing some sense of a space around Ellie. Now, if I bypass delay designer, let's take a listen. Barely started my day, you didn't even step up to the plate, and you're already playing mind games. Much more intimate. But now if I bypass all of these effect plugins, take a listen to what the vocals sound like by itself. Barely started my day, you didn't even step up to the plate, and you're already playing mind games. I might, I might, I might run downstairs. Take a listen to before and after. Barely started my day, you didn't even step up to the plate, and you're already playing mind games. I might, I might, I might run downstairs. Right, it's kind of an uninspiring sound, to be honest. And I'm only making assumptions, but knowing the fact that Ellie does a lot of recording on her own, perhaps these vocals were recorded in the home environment. With a handful of plug-in processors that come with Logic Pro, we have a vastly different vocal presentation that sounds pretty freaking sick. If I unsolo, if we listen in the context before and after. Barely started my day. You know, the vocal doesn't really capture the imagination, but we add the channel EQ here, plus a compressor, console EQ, de-esser, multiband compressor, and another compressor. Take a listen. Barely started my day, you didn't even step up to the plate, and you're already playing mind games. I might, I might, I might run downstairs, middle of the night, thought I left the oven on, cause you're such a... It's vastly different in presentation. And take a look at the type of compression that's occurring on this vocal. Barely started my day. You didn't even step up to the plate. And you're already playing mind games. I might, I might, I might run downstairs. Middle of the night. 
The studio VCA here is leaning into the vocals a healthy amount, right? It's knocking back like 10 decibels. And then we have the multi-presser that's doing some tonal shaping and dynamic adjusting. The vintage opto doing a little bit more leveling. Plus the channel EQ doing cleanup before it's hitting these processors and the console EQ adding a healthy amount of high end to give that air and that articulation to the vocals, even a touch of the low end to add some body or chest to Ellie's vocals. Another high pass filter that's definitely dealing with some plosives, right? So we have pretty steep filter at 72 hertz and let it be known, everybody on the internet says, hey, don't use steep filters. And yet here's one here that's doing just fine. Another high pass filter at 160 hertz. My point being is a lot of home studio environments often require this kind of level of compression and EQ. Often it takes multiple stages to achieve a sound that you're after, that you know is possible. Examine this plugin chain, maybe save it and use it on your own vocals. Which brings me to the bass processing here. Now take a look and a listen to the bass. All I want to say is that's a ton of plugins on a bass guitar, right? We have a channel EQ and I'll just paw through them. Then we have a noise gate, distortion, scanner vibrato, which is something I never think to use. Then on top of all this, we have the fat effects adding distortion, bass enhancement, compression. Then we have a compressor, 2BQ, further tonally shaping the bass. We have a compressor that's being sidechained not by the kick, but the snare sound. Then there's an exciter. And if you take a look right here, it's being sent to a parallel channel of bass amp designer. I mean, there is so much plugin processing on this bass. And yet, if we solo just the bass and remove all of the processing, take a listen. Where'd the bass go? I mean, obviously it's quieter, but still, it has a dramatically different tone. We bring back the bass. And there you go. There's the bass. My point is, is that a lot of folks on the internet will tell you, hey, if you use a lot of plugins to process your tracks, you've already lost. That you don't need 100 plugins to get to the sound that you're trying to achieve. And this may be true in certain contexts. Like at some point in time, all of us will run into that situation where we are chasing our tail over and over again, throwing on plugin after plugin to fix something in our project that probably could be achieved with a fader adjustment, some panning adjustment, a little more thoughtful use of EQ and compression. But when you have that sound profile in your head, that image in your head of what the bass is supposed to sound like, what the vocal is supposed to sound like, then the amount of plugins on a channel strip of a track should not be the determining factor of if you are successful or not at achieving the sound you have set out to achieve. I also just want to point out, I really, really love the sound of these guitars, specifically the use of, again, the scanner and vibrato. So if we pop both of these open, just take a listen to what it sounds like. So I'm gonna pop both open. If I turn them off. There's just kind of this haunted effect using the scanner vibrato. Again, it's a plugin I never think to use, but based on this project, I love the sound of, and I'm definitely going to use in the next project. Another thing that I think is pretty cool is the fact that the kick drum has a sample that kind of goes in and out. So we have this course kick here with a really smacky attack to it. Then this four by four kick. which has much more thud in low end. And you can hear that's dropping in and out of the production. I was just minding my business. Then you took a ball and you pitched it. Should have known when you check my stuff. But when we get close to the pre-chorus here. In the penthouse, you're on the ground floor. Like, oh, middle of 
the night Thought I left her off and on Cause you're such a gaslight Always looking down Cause you think you're a winner You're so full of it How'd you even eat? It's an enhancement that you don't even necessarily perceive, right? You don't even really notice the kick drum that's poking out at you more. But it's effective, and I dig it for that. Further down in the bridge, we go back to not having that smacky kick. Stupid, now I'm lucid, let you walk all over, get up in my face like a toothpick. Pretty sick. Now, a couple last things I noticed that actually surprised me quite a bit. If we take a listen... Right at about 110, 108. So if we go right about here, just take a listen to this section right here from 108 to 110, 112. Just listen. Swing, swing, if you're gonna play these games, I'll join in. You throw a lot of curveballs, yeah, but I'm hitting the sea. I'm with a lot, lot more than you're giving me. Swing, swing, if you're gonna play these games, I'll join in. Anything really poke out at you? Probably not. But if I solo the bass, take a listen. That right there, that pop, I'm actually quite surprised by it. Personally, anytime I hear a pop or a click, I immediately jump into Isotopes RX and I get those things out of there as quick as possible. And if you don't own RX, well, you could certainly just use the marquee tool, make a selection, delete, and boom. And then, you know, add a fade to each of the regions. We take a listen. That's what I usually do, but yet, if we just get rid of everything I just did on solo, take a listen. That little pop, that little click means nothing in the context of the song. And that's a lesson for me in particular. If we take a listen to the guitars, right around the same spot. That's a pretty serious pop right there. We zoom in, expand the waveform, right there. Again, I would get rid of that as soon as possible personally. And I'm not saying that this is by any means a big mistake. I'm just saying it's very interesting that this is there. It caught my ear, but only when I soloed the guitars and the bass. We get rid of it. And if we unsolo, there's so much rhythmic activity in the project that doesn't really matter. Nobody would have noticed that otherwise. And honestly, who knows? Maybe in the final version that's on Apple Music, it's not there. I guess what I'm getting at in this song and project is that there is stuff that flies in the face of all the stuff that you see on YouTube, online, and articles. It just flies in the face, I think, in terms of throwing a lot of processing at a bass guitar if you have to, leaving a popper click here or there, because it doesn't really matter in the scheme and the sauce of the song. The fact that you can use birdsong to enhance the feeling of your song. This is gold in my mind, and I think it's well worth examining, taking inspiration from, taking solace in that a creative like Ellie could be crafting songs and covers in her bedroom and evoke an emotion in the listener by tapping on a glass, by recording birds, by chomping into a watermelon. For me, that's incredibly inspiring. I hope it is for you too. All right, so those are some of my thoughts on the demo song Project Swing from Ellie Dixon that comes with Logic Pro for Mac 11, Logic Pro for iPad 2. If you had any insights, anything that you thought was so cool, leave a comment below. These are cool opportunities for all of us to grow when artists are cool enough to have their music on full display for anyone to poke around at and take a listen to inside Logic Pro. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Pro Rules on the channel and on the website. And please be sure to check out the description below where I include links always to PDFs, guides, templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.